Now, our children are all grown now. How many of you have got a couple of kids, two or three or four or five, something like that? Isn't it interesting how none of them are alike? You know what I'm talking about? I mean, there, there's, you don't have two. You go, oh, your two are just alike. You know, they're all different. It seems like no matter, how many, no matter how many you have, they're different. They may have some similarities, but I've got three, and they're three distinctly different kids. Now, we're, we're good southern people, so if you were to come over and hang out with us one evening, we'd probably go out back on our screened-in porch and sit there, and we'd get some, some sweetened tea. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, 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 you know, lots of sugar and caffeine. We'll be up all night. You know what I'm saying. And, and, you know, syrupy, it's good. That's a good southern drink, right? And, and, you know, when our kids were little, they were convinced that we had them so that they could wait on us. <laughs> and they were partially right. <laughs> and, and so had you come to visit us when our kids were little and we were going to have some sweet tea, it would have been very likely that we would have sent one of those kids or some of those kids after some tea. And as we had done that, we would have seen their little personalities manifested differently in the way they got the tea, wouldn't we? Our oldest child, Denise, very proper. Everything is supposed to be in its place. Details matter. When she was little, she could tell if the children, that's what she called them, <laughs> the children had been in her room because the air had been moved. <laughs> if Denise goes and gets our tea, there'll be 2.3 cubes in each glass. Each glass will be filled exactly the same because fairness matters. They will be placed exactly the same on the tray, and with way too much stress, this child will deliver the tea. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You got one of those, right? Our second child, Rachel. R R Rachel, I mean, from the moment she's born, has been a party looking for a place to happen. <laughs> and, and if she was little, when our kids were growing up, they were little. Y'all remember the old cartoon, Beauty and the Beast, right? I mean, if Rachel goes and gets the tea, she's going to set the stereo speakers out, plug in Beauty and the Beast. She's this high, and she's going to come out going, be our guest, be our guest, be our guest. <laughs> right? My son Daniel has a, a wonderful, tender servant's heart. He's very concerned about other people. It's a wonderful character trait to have. And he would come out and take your personal order on how you wanted your tea. And then he would go back and take the time to prepare exactly what you wanted, and he would bring it out. And then he would have a little towel over his head, <laughs> serving you. That's, that's his personality stuff. And see, if we want tea around our house with all this junk going on, we're probably going to have to send two or three of them because they're probably going to bump into each other, right? <laughs> we're going to diversify our efforts so we end up with some tea at the end. You know what I'm saying? Diversify. Spread around. They told us in investment class 101, the very first finance class you take, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put, you ever heard that? Say yes. yes. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. See, if you put all your eggs in one basket, the problem is something could happen to that basket. That's a bad idea. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Instead, spread your eggs around. Put a couple here and let, let's buy a little bit of this kind of an investment here and we're going to continue. You know, we don't want it all in one place. Something could happen to the one place and we wouldn't want to have that happen. I mean, you know, there, there could be a, a disaster. There could be a hurricane. And if we have all of our eggs, in one basket, oh, we could run into all kinds of problems. I mean, something could come along <laughs> and cause problems. This is a regulation 16-pound shot put. Pretty serious. I mean, we could name this 911. We could name this Katrina. We could name it job layoff. We could name it, you invested all of your 401k in your company and your company stock went to zero when your company went broke. So don't buy company stock in your 401k. It's putting all your eggs in one basket. And if you put all your eggs, oh, this is scaring me. <laughs> are, are you guys down there freaking out just a little bit? I mean, this, there may be a problem here. We may need to get, like, the plastic out. Are you all ready? Because if you put all your eggs in one basket, I mean, you know, something could come along, couldn't it? Do we need to draw the suspense out more? I mean, it would be, you want to spread it out. See what diversification does? 
You see what diversification does? Diversification creates safety and you're not gonna have that happen. Oh! You gotta be careful. Ugh. Uh, you gotta be careful. You can't bet the farm on one horse, can you? You'd want to spread it out. Because see, if I drop it on that one, or I drop it on that one, I got all the rest of these, and I'll be fine. Everything will be okay, won't it? Now, with virtually all investments, as the risk goes up, you should make a better return. So does the hopeful return. So if I'm going to take less risk, I'm usually going to make less on my money. Does that make sense? And so there's a spectrum of risk. As I take more risk, I'm going to make more money. I can put my money over here in a, in a simple cookie jar. And I could do an investment in a cookie jar. Now, cookie jars have an interest rate of what? Zero. Zero. So I can put my money in here. I'm not going to make anything on it. But it'll pretty much be here, unless the kids find it. <laughs> but that's a zero risk, but a zero return. I could take a little bit more risk and put it in a savings account, and I'm going to make like, woo, whoopee, 2% or something, right? But it's going to be there most of the time as long as I can get the teller to figure out the account number, right? I mean, there's very little risk with FDIC insurance. I could take a little bit more risk and do a CD. I could take a little bit more risk and maybe do a mutual fund. I could maybe buy a single stock. That's even more risk, but I might make more return. I could go to Las Vegas. That'd be a little more risk. Or I could go completely off the risk spectrum and I could be a day trader and lose my tail end. Now, I don't recommend day trading or Vegas as your investment plan, but I also don't recommend cookie jars because there's two kinds of risk you've got to consider when you're thinking about investing. Now, keep in mind, saving is for five years or less. Investing is for five years or more. I'm going to leave this alone long term. Now, here's the situation. If I lose my money because I put it in a bad investment, that's a risk, the risk of losing my money. And when I say risk, that's what you think of, right? Say yes. yes. Now, there's another kind of risk, though. If you're not making at least 6% on your money when you're investing at five years or more, you've got another problem, inflation and taxes. Because see, inflation runs for the last 70 years, according to the Consumer Price Index, the CPI, that has averaged about 4.2%. And so this $100, if it doesn't earn 4.2%, if it earns 4.2%, it'll just be worth what it was worth last year. It'll only buy what it would buy last year because it's worth 4.2% less in terms of purchasing power. That's what inflation is. Does that, under, does that make sense? Say yes. Okay, so I've got to make 4.2% to break even with inflation and to net, after I pay taxes on my money, making money, to net 4.2%, I've got to make 6%. So 6%, I pay taxes, I break even. So you've got to make 6% on your money to break even with taxes and inflation. And so you've got to move along this risk spectrum enough that you get up in above 6% to be making any real money above taxes and inflation. Does that make sense? Say yes. So, in other words, if I stay back here, I'm not going to probably lose my money, but I'll get tackled from behind by inflation and taxes catching up with me and giving me a, a shoestring tackle just as I get to the finish line. And, and all of a sudden, I've got a big pile of money, but because I, it's been over a huge number of years, it really won't buy anything, and I'm not ready to go. So you've got to take those two kinds of risks into consideration. Also with investing, when discussing investments, liquidity means availability. When you hear someone say, I have a liquid investment, that just means they can get their money. It doesn't mean they bought water. <laughs> and so, the, again, if you take more risk, you make more money. But the other thing is, if you're willing to tie your money up, and it does, you can't get to it, it's not available, it's not liquid, then you can make more money as well. So, in other words, it's very liquid in the cookie jar, isn't it? But a crummy investment as a long-term investment. I'm not making anything on it. It's safe and it's liquid, but that doesn't give me what I want for a five-year or longer investment. Same thing with a stupid savings account or a CD, a certificate of depression. <laughs> I'm not really making anything on my money after taxes and inflation. So I've got to take a little more risk and I've got to be willing to tie my money up a little longer. And if I go all the way over here, there's an investment a lot of you have made that is an excellent, excellent investment 
that is very, very illiquid. It's very hard to get your money out of quick and easy. But it's a great investment, and a lot of you have one. What is it? A house. Real estate. Real estate's a great investment, but it's very hard to get your money out of. Your money's not available. It's not liquid. And, and if you don't believe me, try to sell a house fast. We have a word in real estate for houses that sell fast. Cheap. You have to discount the price really deep to get it to move. Proof it's not liquid. Same thing with mutual funds and other things like that. You do, you do not want to be in those things if you have to jump in and out, jump in and out, jump in and out. You want to be able to park your money for a while and you want to take a little bit of risk. Not too much over to day trading, but we want to take a little bit of risk and be able to leave it alone a little while in order to be able to make more than that 6% and do well. As there is more liquidity, there's typically less return. So as the money's more available, just like as there's less risk, you're not going to make much on your money. So if you want your money available and safe, you're not going to make any money on your money. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to lose money after taxes and inflation. So you've got to take a little bit of risk. When you bought a house, you didn't get a guarantee, but it was a good buy, right? Right? Okay. The house is no guarantee, so you took some risk. But it was an educated risk because real estate has a good track record over many years of being a good investment. So you felt safe buying it. But you don't have a government guarantee against loss on your house, do you? Say no. no. So you took a risk, but it was a reasonable risk for a good investment. And you tied your money up.